Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys here. I'm Christian Ocampo and today I'm being joined by Mary Harrington. How are you doing? Good, how are you Christian? I'm doing good. Thank you for joining us for this interview. We really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. So we have a few questions we'd like to ask you. Uh, first of all, what is it like working in the industry today? Uh, well, so I started uh, in the voiceover industry when I was nine years old, or I guess I started acting when I was nine, and I, I think I, I sort of veered into voiceover when I was 12. So the industry has changed a lot in that time, um, and the big thing I that I think is that it's a lot more um, of a solo business that that it once was, and and I mean like from on every aspect. So it used to be that like you went into your agent's office to audition, and you had like a director who might who might help you with your audition, and then you know you would go and say you booked your cartoon or whatever, and then you would record with your cast. Like the first season, I, the first series I ever did, there was our first recording, there were I think eight of us in the booth. It was a lot of us. Now it's very much, um, it's a much more solo endeavor. So most of the actors I'm sure you're interviewing um, talk about auditioning from home. You know, they might even run sessions for commercial clients or whatever from home. Uh, and when you're recording um, your your cartoons, and certainly anime because it's not um, something you can record together, you are alone. It's just you um, in the studio. Um, obviously, in, in that case, you would have a director, but that's, that's um, kind of what it's like nowadays, certainly versus back in the day. It's much more... Um, you're, you're on your own a lot more to make uh, creative decisions and imagine how um, characters are speaking to you in the scene. Uh, it's just kind of, you're self-generating a lot. Oh, okay. No, that's probably summed up. Yeah. So during your time in the voiceover world, what is your favorite show you have worked on? Uh... In the voiceover world, this is this is a terrible answer because there's a show that I've been working on for three years now, and it's not out yet, and that is currently my favorite. So I will I'll keep you posted. But if I had to choose something that was out already, I would um, have to say, at least in my recent memory, what was the most fun was uh, Bunsen is a Beast on Nickelodeon, and what I loved about that was because it um, it felt different in that it was a group recording and there were like six of us in the in the booth at Nickelodeon. Everybody's there on the other side of the glass. The showrunner Butch Hartman, who did shows like Fairly Odd Parents and Tough Puppy and all of that, he knows exactly what he wants. It moves very quickly and it's tons of energy. So I think that would be at least my most recent favorite. Oh, okay. All right, here's one of the shows we'd like to ask you. What was that freaking on Fist of the North Star? So Fist of the North Star, I uh, I did when I very very first came from Canada to um, to LA, and that was the if I had to sum it up in one word, fast. I think there were. If you didn't majorly mess up on your first take, you were moving on. There was no time. It was like you you previewed the cue, uh, it beeped once, you you did it, and if and if it was at all in the ballpark, you were moving on. So it's just you had to be uh, know your scripts in advance because you there was just no time. It was just like bam 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 with your cues. You were not getting a lot of direction. It was just go. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And, well, it's a classic series, so there's that. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, this is something where um, I'm probably not as informed as some of your other guests as to the history of some of these shows. I am I'm not, I wouldn't describe myself uh, as an anime sort of fan girl or anything so some of these shows um i've only discovered after i've come aboard sort of what they've meant to people hmm. uh, so i 
I had been told at the time that this of the North Star was a was a big thing, but again, it moved so fast. I was like, okay, I don't really know what to do with that information. I'm just going to give the best performance I can <laughs> and hope that it works. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another question, and this is a cute little show. What was that working on Love Live? So Love Live was a very was a very sweet show, um, as you say. Um, first of all, being there was twenty six episodes of it, and being the lead of it um, in terms of what it was like for the show, it was quite long because there was a lot there was a lot of work to cover. Um, personally, I I felt. Um, more connected to that show than I think uh, a lot of other anime shows that I watch because, um, or that I've worked on, because I went to an all-girls school, I was a student leader, I had a band in high school, and she's a redhead, so I was kind of like, this feels like my high school days, you know? Um, I cared so much about my school, um, and heck, I mean, I still I still do. I'm still friends with so many of these girls. So um, I think that like that connected me into into Love Live in a way that um, sort of few other uh, anime shows have thus far for me. So yeah. No oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. What? It was just like all the parallels. Oh, and also because like Honoka's friend, her mom was like head of the school, right? And my friend in high school, her mother was the head of the school as well. So it was like there were all these bizarre parallels with this show that I was like, it was like my actual, um, I mean, I was not a pop star in, in high school trying to save my school, but um, there were a lot of parallels to my to my real life. So that was, that was a special show to work on. And certainly it was really special too because um, – it meant so so much to, to so many fans too. Right on. Huh. Yeah. All right. Uh, another show that was that's been really popular. What was like working on One Punch Man? So One Punch happened right after uh, Love Live. And talk about what what was interesting about One Punch for me was uh, again I don't necessarily know sometimes with these projects that I'm getting involved in like the following that there there is with it but creatively I felt like it was really exciting to do because um given my natural voice type I often play the sweet girl the perky the slightly quirky girl but I don't often um or at least I hadn't at that time now I'm playing sort of more outside of my usual sandbox but um these characters that are that are the villains who have or or who have like this dark side and who can fly off the handle so creatively I was just sort of like oh this is like a different part of myself that I get to um play with <laughs> so um so yeah that was it, that was what was really fun about the show for me was it felt like outside of my usual wheelhouse oh, okay Mm -hmm. All right, next question, and this is the one that came out as a surprise for everyone. What was that working on FLCL or Fui Kui, as people call it? So I just started, so I can't sort of say too much about it thus far, but um, I think um, it has a lot of the similar uh, aspects of, of heart and uh, female friendship that I that I loved about doing Love Live. Um, and it's just, and it is a really, it is a really cool show. So I just, 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 just started, so I can't speak too much to it yet. But um, so far it's been a real pleasure and I'm, and I'm um, enjoying learning about the show sort of like via fans and, and uh, Googling, you know, because talk about a long history on that. I had no idea when I auditioned. So, um, so that's, that's a, been a, a really um, neat thing to to read about the history there. Oh, okay. And now some far funny little question we'd like to ask you: If you could be any character you have played in real life, who would you be? And you can mix and match. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I would probably say of of my characters, and these they're not 
anime characters or animation characters, but I would probably um, choose either Pearly or um, Libby from Star Darling because both of them have magical powers, uh, surround themselves in a lot of pink, which I love pink. I'm still like stuck in my 13 year old self, I suppose. Um, and uh, they're awesome at throwing parties and they're great friends, but um, and they have great hair. Which I just don't have, so I would, I would, uh, I would say probably Livy or Pearly. No, okay. Who doesn't want magical powers? I don't know who doesn't. Right. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything else coming out that you can talk about, or anything else you want to plug in at this time? Uh, well, um, I sort of alluded to this, um, earlier, so I have a show that I've been working on for, I did the pilot three years ago, and I've been working on it every single week for the last, um, 18 months, uh, that's going to be announced, uh, the show itself has been announced, but my role in it has not been announced yet, so, um, if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram or on my Facebook page, it's literally any day now, uh, that they'll be making the cast announcements, and I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited about this show to come out, because talk about funny, a whole bunch of heart, um, yeah, and, and it's a different voice that, uh, nobody's ever heard me do before. She's a totally different character from any of these shows that you've touched on today. So um, so follow me on social media stuff for that because I can't wait to share that with you. Um, and then um, in terms of other stuff, um, my, my web series that I'm on camera on uh, just came out uh, recently that I wrote and produced and acted in, and that's called uh, Pleasant Events. So I have that on my uh, social media too that you can connect with me about that. Okay. All right. Uh, we come to the last question. And since we mentioned Twitter, any Facebook or Instagram for the fans to contact you at? Yeah, you can. Um, I'm. I think on Facebook. I think it's like you just look for my page. I think it's Marianne Harrington official. I'm pretty sure. And then um, on both Twitter and Instagram, it's at Red Harrington. H E R I N G T O N. So um, you can connect with me there, and I love talking to you guys. And, um, you know, it's really special when people reach out and say, hey, this show that I did um, got me through, like, a hard time or brought or made my life better in, in, a, in a certain way. That, that's, really, that's really special. I, I love hearing that and, and what people enjoy about the, about the show because um, – you know, sometimes it can seem silly doing, oh, cartoon voices, like, oh, you're not curing cancer. But I know for myself in my life when I've had um, hard times that entertainment has has played a really important role in my life. So if I can be a small part of something that helps make somebody else's day lighter and, and happier, then that's really, really special. So, so don't hesitate to reach out. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us for this interview. Us and the, me and the Ohio guys, we really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. And I'll keep you guys posted when I can officially talk about that new show. Because okay. I think you're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. And thank you all for joining us for another episode of the Ohio guys. Thank you all. My name is Christian. Bye. Thank you.